I understand there's a verdict. So you may bring the jury. Madam Four Lady, if you'll stand for me. Uh, have you reached a verdict? Yes, we have. Is it unanimous? Yes, it is. Okay, if you'll pass it to the clerk, who will pass it to me, and you may be seated. If the defendant will rise, defendants will rise, and Madam Clerk, if you will publish the verdicts. Signed by the four person. Do Signed not. by the four person. Yes. State of South Carolina versus Larry Eugene King. Indictments 2019 GS 15 00780. 2022 GS 15 00709. And 2022 GS 15 00813. You. Madam Four Lady uh, and members of the jury, if that is your verdict, please let it be known by raising your right hands. All right, thank you. All hands are raised. Any, the verdict appears to be a unanimous verdict. Any individual polling requested? Okay, Madam Clerk, if you will poll the jury as it relates to the verdicts involving this paneling, paneling. Uh, 
I just your numbers stand individually and pose the questions to them. Is, is this your verdict and it's still your verdict? Did you call them like your numbers? Numbers, yes. The jury has been polled. It's a unanimous verdict of guilt. Any post-trial motions? Response by the state. All right, this, the matters were submitted, properly submitted to the jury for the jury's consideration. Uh, they studied the um, evidence carefully. The evidence was appropriately placed before them for their consideration. Uh, they have reached a verdict that is unanimous and the court respectfully denies each motion made by each defendant. And we're required at this time to move through the trial as well. Yes, sir. And the court likewise denies, denies a motion for new trial as to each defendant. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all. I know you all didn't didn't know what you had in store coming in here uh, Monday. And um, you, you might have come in as spectators and all of a sudden got thrown into the mix and realized that it's all, the burden was totally in, on your shoulders to listen to the evidence and stay focused and, and go back and deliberate um, to reach a verdict. Uh, quite obviously, it's a... Uh, heart-wrenching set of facts um, and circumstances, uh, extremely terrible, almost unimaginable, uh, but yet um, with the, these are the facts of life that we have to deal with um, in today's environment. Um, some things occur that are so extreme you just wouldn't believe or couldn't hardly believe it to be true, but you've realized through listening to this case that these things happen and it happened in this case. And I want to thank you for um, responding to um, the call of duty and serving as jurors played a very important and critical function. Certainly, uh, you, if you had to find yourself being involved in a trial one way or the other, you'd love to uh, have 12 jurors who listen, who um, take the job seriously, who deliberate it, and, and render uh, a verdict. And uh, I want to thank each and every one of you. Now, Mr. Engineer, what type of engineer are you? Mechanic. 
mechanical. Uh, uh, my daughter's a civil, and uh, I presided in Aiken County where there are a whole lot of engineers, and, and I usually tell the lawyers don't put any engineers on the jury because they have a hard time. Uh, they analyze so much that, uh, that they... Uh, it's being an engineer, so, um, but, you know, of course, I, I never tell her that, uh, but uh, that's the way it is, with, depending on your training and profession and your level of expectation on things, and I appreciate that, and that's what makes for a fair and impartial juror, uh, jury to have people from all walks of life that, that can come in and, and deal with things. And our youngest young man, are you the youngest on the jury? I want to, want to thank you for um, having confidence in yourself that you can be a juror and, and to, um, to do something that you probably didn't think you could do, but you did it. So I want to congratulate you and, and everyone else on the jury. Um, I know that it uh, wasn't, wasn't easy for any of you, but... Uh, that's, that's our system and our system at, at work. You know, the case was investigated. The case was presented to the grand jury of this county. Uh, then the case was presented to you all, and you all have made a decision. And I support your decision 100%. Now, when you find someone guilty, then it becomes my responsibility to impose a sentence. And um, are you all, do you need time to prepare for sentencing? No. I'm ready to look on your name and speak with me about Pardon? stay in the courtroom at this point, but um, you certainly can confer with the, with the, you want to transport people now. <laughs> you banned them from the courtroom earlier. He's ready to, he's come back. He's, well, just need to speak you Okay, sure, absolutely. Uh, take your time. Thank you. <clears throat> so, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, you have no role in sentencing. That's you know, totally the responsibility of the judge. Uh, I have found that jurors uh, typically like to see what happens all the way through the end of the case. Uh, I'm certainly um, in no rush to impose a sentence because um, this is such a, a, a tragic situation. And as people appear in court, they're not they're typically, or quite often, not. they don't appear the same as they appear when they commit the crimes. Um, but, but you're welcome to stay, and uh, you can just be at ease for a moment while Mr. Uh, Phillips confers with his client. Um, and I'll say that uh, uh, once you are off the jury, then you're free to talk about the case with anyone that you might want to talk with about it, but you're not obligated to talk with anyone. Uh, and if anyone should annoy, harass, or bother you in any way, let me know, and I'll, I'll take care of it. Um, any uh, interference or threatening or bothering jurors is, is punishable as a serious crime, and we take those things seriously. Um, I don't anticipate that you have anything to worry about, but we um, keep the identity of jurors uh, private, except for the four lady. <laughs> and um, but you, you're certainly welcome to talk to anyone that you might want to. And, um, so we're going to take. A, are you ready now?
No, I'm not going to dismiss them. They're free to go or free to stay. So just be at ease for just a moment. I'm going to step out for just a moment. You'll be at ease for a moment. From the state. Your Honor, I don't believe that there's anything I can add that you don't already know. Uh, you've seen this case, you've seen all the evidence, uh, as, as has the jury. I don't believe there's anything I can add to that other than just my opinion, which is it is one of the worst things I've seen in my 30 years as a prosecutor. And I think they tortured this child. I think she died. Any um, victims want to say, do you have any victims here who might want to speak? We have a or few victims, rec we representatives. Yeah. Yes, sir. We have a few family members. We've talked with them, um, and they do not wish to address. I believe I'll check one more time, but I do not believe. If you want to identify for the record the family members. There are some family members here, but they do not want to address you. They don't oh. want to address the court. Do you want to identify them for the record or no? I'll ask. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Very good. Uh, for the defense. You're surprised to. Prefer to do what? To have an individual uh, hearing in front of the court for sentencing rather than two of us come forward, Mr. King, and grab the stand. 
Yes, sir, that's fine. Uh, we'll uh, bring him for for sentencing, but you can uh, speak to me now, and I may speak to him as well. Yes, sir. Any reply from the state regarding Mr. King? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Phillips. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to show the state I have a list of character letters I'd like to hand up to Your Honor. Uh, a lot of family and friends. She has an incredible family support system, friend system, uh, and many of them have provided letters in support and mitigation. <laughs> and I'll wait and give your, your honor an opportunity to review this a lot of those. So. Uh, 
First letter, I know this wouldn't have happened if she wasn't with Larry King. She's paid for her mistakes. She's been working and recently was married. She's not a criminal. She's a good person, she's not a criminal. Please don't let this one stupid mistake define who Rita really is. Please consider leniency, Judge. So that's one of about how many kind of number there. We also have family and friends that are here to speak on her behalf. All right. Next one, she made a horrible mistake. This isn't a person, there isn't a person in the world she doesn't love who that loved Christina more than Rita. don't feel that Rita deserves to spend the rest of her life in prison. People learn from their mistakes. She made the ultimate mistake that day. I believe she will take that off a day and teach people that the, the dangers of leaving a child in a hot car. I hope that lapse of judgment could result in the ultimate reality. She's an awesome mom and grandmom to her family, which she wouldn't hurt anyone. I'm asking the courts to find her not guilty and let her take be and take care of her rest of her family. Again, I'm asking the court to find Rita not guilty. Next one. I'm writing this letter for Rita, my mother, so we, we've heard from her, Elizabeth Clyde, already. Okay. And you want me to read this letter as well? She'll speak. It'll be fine. Okay. Letter from a cousin. Rita always wanted to be a teacher. And nothing has ever come easy for Rita. And she fell in love with a boy from the Philippines named Wally. My uncle went nuts. And after the first grandchild, 
things settled down. Rita and Wally had three girls, the last being Christina. She supported Wally with his endless years in college and supported the family until Wally could open his own medical practice as a chiropractor. two years ago. She's a caring Christian person who loves her family and working two jobs to help her husband financially. She cherishes her husband, children, and grandchildren. One of the most caring, supporting persons I know She's been a flawless as a co-worker and team player. There have been times today where we would sit and discuss the powerful word of God, FaceTime, reading the Bible together. She's an amazing woman, influential in her faith and in her life. And this is one from her husband. He's here as well. And he'll be speaking. Uh, Rita sat him down to explain the incident early in the relationship. I did not. It did not change the way I feel for her. I fell in love with her from inside out. She's humble, inspired me to pursue my lifelong dreams, cries herself to sleep. You know she misses her daughter. She, knowing that she will be reunited with her daughter one day gives her hope and strength. Rita says Larry would never have put Christina in that car if it wasn't running with the AC on. I believe the statement is a testament to her humility. I don't pay attention to the negative misinformed reports on social media. I have faith in our attorney's ability to present the truth. I plead for leniency. I want my wife to come home, whether it be probation or house arrest. She has problematic kidneys and a history of cancer. And the next person met her three or four years ago. My name is Wanda Clyde, our daughter by choice, Rita's daughter. Shocked when Christina died and shocked to learn the surrounding circumstances. I know she was under tremendous stress being a single parent, taking care of a special needs child. I know this was a horrendous accident and asked for the court's mercy. You want me to review them or no? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, you, every person has their process of doing things. Uh, sure. You want me a special way? You want me to review your what you gave me? No, yeah. She's always involved with her daughter. Push Karina, Christina around the track. 
welcomed me into her family. Uh, this, this is from a son-in-law. Character reference. I've known her almost four or five years. We met at IHOP. I was honestly the best co-worker I've ever had. Um, helpful to her when she was pregnant. She's a spiritual and godly woman. Goes to church almost every Sunday. She's not a murderer. What happened to Christina was an accident. I've known Rita, and I believe that she thought the air conditioner was on and this was an accident. She does not deserve this when she's been tortured enough herself. She's a good woman. If she's punished, give her house arrest. Uh, from an elderly retired man that's also disabled, who Rita showed him nothing but kindness. He used a walker to get around. She's paid for his meals. Whatever happened to Christina that day was not on purpose. She does not have an evil or malicious bone in her body. I'm going to let her now from the eldest daughter. Is she here? And she intends to speak. Plead for the judge to show her mercy. I've never been in trouble before. Pleading for Rita's freedom. I am begging for leniency and understanding as well as an unbiased, fair trial. House arrest is the ideal discipline. Someone may try to harm her if she is sent to prison. She's already suffered. Punishing her will not bring my sister back. Someone who is who has helped translating this letter because her English is not good. Who runs a Apparently runs a restaurant where the daughters would come to eat and spend time with their mother. Have so much love for her child. I know in my heart this was an accident. <coughs> I've seen Rita cry at work sometimes over Christina. She does not deserve any further punishment. And from a tax advisor, witness her financial struggle in the face of a difficult divorce. <coughs> Prepare the taxes. She has a heart pure of gold. I'm aware of the charges and I truly believe it was not intentional. Just not thinking clearly at the time she is hardly remorseful. She's a devoted and caring parent. As a teacher, I was blessed to teach her daughters who are honor roll students. She supported her during her difficult divorce and becoming a single mother, friend for 25 years, my supervisor since 2023, she can run circles around the associates who are young enough to be her children and grandchildren. 
which is known as a workhorse. Rita has called on me as her spiritual advisor, a pastor at church in Georgia, and she's given her access to her personal life. She loves children, and she has a great support group with family, friends, co-workers. Encourage her to this person to go to school and uh, finish their education. She would never commit any other crime. Felt as if she has been, feels as if she's been senten sentenced already. This one knows her through her ex husband who's this person's third cousin, always quick on her feet. She has a good moral character. She's been under pastoral counseling and care. She has frequently shared stories and moments that she and Christina share together, cherished moments. She has a deep rooted love for her family and I wholeheartedly vouch for her character, integrity, and altruistic nature, her resilience in the face of adversity, her unwavering love for her family, and her readiness to serve those around her. She's an exceptional individual. And finally, school principal for eight years, she was a school principal for eight years. She, she was transferred in 1996. Thrilled when she was allowed to transfer to her school, continued to work as a first grade teacher. A good relationships with her students, parents, coworkers. Worked on morning bus duty, would monitor the students. She's a math coach. Took her job as an educator very seriously. Volunteered for many things. I had a very loving relationship with her two oldest daughters. Christina was born later. And she um, saw what was placed on Facebook. She, the person who testified, um, Mrs. Carter. So this is a similar to her testimony. All right, I reviewed the letters. Yes, Your Honor. This is her And we'll make all of the, these letters a part of the record. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Tell us your full name. Ashley Elaine Pangalangan. Yes, ma'am. I was going to read my letter, but that's not the best idea here. I just um, want to tell you a couple of things that would never be known that I'm not even sure if 
my mother knows that I, that I know this, but um, a family friend of ours a couple years ago told me that one day my mom was at Christina's graveyard and um, so she was sitting the, there. The, tell me what you just said. My, my mother, Rita Pangolin, was at Christina's graveyard one, one day visiting her. I think it was Christina's birthday a couple of years ago. And then she sat in the car and rolled the windows up herself in the heat at the graveyard because of how terrible and awful she felt about what happened to my sister. She tortured herself every day. I have to hear her cry every night when I stay with her. She's not been allowed to visit my, my, my babies because of this. She already has suffered so much to the point where that she rolled herself up in the car just to see what my sister went through. She's not even aware that I know that. How long did she stay in the car I'm with the windows sure. rolled up? I never asked, just the thought of it. She's tortured herself. She's suffering. I know it looks awful, but I know in my heart that she never would have intentionally done it. I love her to death. I wouldn't be here today without her. Her love is very strong. She's, she's a good mom. I know, like I said, that sounds cliche at this point, but from the bottom of my heart, she's a good mom. She raised me good. She, she made me responsible. She made me the woman I am today. I'm a homeowner because of her. I stand on two feet because of her. When did you leave home? What year? Well, honestly, I've never, I, had, I never felt like I left. No. <laughs> I mean, I have my own house, but I stay with her every other weekend. Um, we're very close. Were you staying with her during this period of time? Yes, sir. I've been with her every day. I mean, you know, she's lost probably 16 pounds in the past two months. Just because she, I mean, we're, we've been scared to death. You know, um, I've seen her, I've been going to church with her. I, I admit I haven't before recently, but I've been starting to go with her now. She's made me more spiritual. She's given me faith that I never had before. And just to watch her in church and raise her hands up and sing and praise God, it's just, it's done something for me because. To see her have that strong of faith in her situation means, means that I can have it too. Um, I just felt like it goes without saying if everyone in the room could have just hugged her for a couple of seconds, they would know what the verdict should have been. But they just could have held her. Like she's helped me. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Do I need to state my name again? Yes, ma'am. Um, my name is Elizabeth Pengelingen Clyde. I am the second daughter, as you already heard. I, if anything, I hate the word victim because if anything, my sister and I, we were the closest besides my mom to Christina. And we're here standing by her side. We refuse to believe any of the media. We refuse to believe any, what anyone else has to say because we know her intention and she loved Christina so much. She made bad mistakes. She got up, she hung out with people she shouldn't have hung out with, but that mistake should not define the rest of her life. We've already lost our sister. Please don't take our mom away. She has worked so hard in the four years she has suffered, and everyone thinks she, just because she got married and she 
earns a living and she got back on her two feet that she's out living her life but she has lived with regret every single day she's worked so hard the two jobs that she's had she's made manager manager in each of the jobs without people even knowing her background her character has pulled her through so much and so we're just asking for mercy and understanding and compassion for my mom please thank you Good afternoon, Your Honor. Yes, sir. My name is Anthony Leisure. I am Rita's husband. Rita has uh, been an inspiration to me, Lord. Um, sir, he really has. She, I'm sorry, I'm nervous. She really has. And I, I pray that you uh, give her leniency and allow her to come home. You know, uh, yeah, when a person is convicted of murder, there's a... I allow you the I, minimum sentence. Will you please allow the minimum the sentence? The minimum sentence, sir, is thirty years. That's the minimum sentence. Your Honor, the maximum sentence is yes, life sir. imprisonment. Yes, sir. Your Honor, when I watched this video, I believed in my heart the car was running and the air conditioner was on. And we hired an attorney, and I watched the second video, and then all of a sudden. I seen a scene that wasn't in the first video. I seen her going to the car. Yeah. Well, and I, I hope you're not you. here to try to relitigate the case. No, sir, I'm not. Because you I'm didn't just... testify. Sir. So I don't, we don't need your analysis of the facts of the case. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Taylor Clyde. Uh, the woman in the black blazer is my wife. I'm the favorite son-in-law. Um, I, I don't want to debate or bring any attention to any of the facts that happened on the day of question, um, but I do want to testify uh, of the character that I've seen in Rita throughout my time of, of being in her family. Um, it was always lavish Christmas gifts. It was always even with everybody else. Everybody had to have the, the same amount, um, the same ridiculous amount that I never got growing up. Um, I always get solid hugs every time we would get together, whether it's at church, whether it's at holidays. There was always food that we would eat together, and I'd always have a ton to bring home. And after uh, the events of the day in question, uh, we got the chance to move her into uh, a property that uh, kind of was adjacent to my parents' home, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, and... Um, in her bedroom, uh, right above her uh, her bed, was um, wasn't a shrine, but it was a it was a beautiful memorial to Christina, um, with a blanket that was I believe Dora themed, and it had Christina's name on it with a nice poem. There were uh, several pictures of her hung on the wall, and. I am uh, not a parent, Your Honor. I don't have children at this time in my life, um, but I, so I have no idea what it's like to lose one. Um, but I don't know how she was able to deal with the pain of going to bed every night and waking up, looking at the wall of pictures, and not, un, you know, completely against her will, reliving the events that happened and, and living without her. Um, I don't have children yet, Your Honor, with my wife, um, but I would very much like to have their grandmother um, in their life when they come. So I'm asking for leniency as well. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you.
afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon. My name is Tijuana Tucker. I'm a co-worker of Rita's. I've known her where about... A co-worker of where? At Walmart Distribution. Yes, sir. I trained Rita there, and um, we became friends, um, work friends, and we break together. Um, Rita moved up very quickly in, within Walmart. Uh, she made a huge impact on a lot of the younger associates, um, got a lot of them permanent that came in through tents. Um, she loves her family. We talk about her family a lot. Uh, she shared a lot of videos of her and Christina with me on breaks uh, where she had an in-ground pool put in at home because Christina loved water and she liked to, for Rita to throw her in to the, excuse me, into the water. Um, Almost every day we laugh and talk about our families and things um, and about the situation at hand. And it was a very tragic situation. And um, I personally don't think her nor Larry intentionally murdered that baby. They just it made a bad choice. <laughs> just actually, well, you, you haven't been here listening to the, um, the law regarding murder, have you? Sir? You haven't been here listening to the testimony in the law regarding Lord. what constitutes murder. I don't know. Her. Have Lord. you been here? No, this is my first time here. Yeah. Your first time coming yes, here? Sir. Yes, sir. Um, but Rita's a good person, um, hardworking. I be with her uh, anywhere between um, 10 and 12 hours, six days out of the week at work. Um, <coughs> she's a joy. Uh, she's a joy. She's a sweet person. And she definitely made a lot of impact on a lot of the young ladies at the job. Uh, a couple of ladies was going through some domestic violence, and um, she helped do that. We all got together and uh, went to HR and got people involved to help a young lady move with her two children. And Rita helped with appliances and stuff, and we got groceries for her and stuff like that. So she's been advocating and talking to the younger ones and stuff like that. Um, again, I just ask for a willingness to see you on her. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Is she now? 53. 53? Yes, sir. And the, the minimum sentence for murder is 30 years. That's correct. So 53 plus 30. Yes, sir. Um, if she gets the minimum sentence. Well, as your honor heard, she served this community for 25 years as a teacher, two time teacher of the year. Again, it's just a very, very tragic situation. When I was brought onto this case, she was working at, as a manager that I hopped and then has, because of insurance, took the job at Walmart. And that eight months would come, it received a promotion and became a manager. And we had one of her other 
supervisors here, uh, potentially as a character witness that was absolutely wanting in your honor read a letter from him about just how critical she is and how great, uh, not only as a person and an employee and everything in between. Her family, to say she has incredible, overwhelming family support, she has that. I know there's no words. That was words. There's no words that we can say other than we believe it's appropriate in this case, given the compelling mitigation. <clears throat> Not to go into the legal part, because I think that's the next, next thing for another matter. But with that, Your Honor, I, I just feel given what we have, this is the sentence that would be appropriate. The minimum day-for-day -day sentence would be essentially a de facto life sentence. And given the fact that the biggest punishment in this whole case is not the sentence that can be imposed, it's the lifelong sentence she's given herself for the loss of her child. That can't be overstated. None of that was lip service. None of that was courtroom drama or manufactured. She is tortured with the loss of her child. That is real. She has real remorse. And she deserves leniency and mercy and the minimum sentence in this case, Your Honor, specifically. Well, you know, you didn't write the law. And you weren't thinking about the law on that day, were you?
Anything else you want to tell me? Response by the state. conduct of the defendants in this case uh, true uh, as being represented now by the defense that it's not a traditional murder it's not where you pull a gun and shoot someone in the head uh, but your conduct can become so extremely reckless that it constitutes a a, a willful disregard for human life and constitutes murder. Um, to place the child in a burning car, in effect, and walking away is murder. To leave a child in a car for six hours under the circumstances that occurred in this case um, is murder. It's, it's not one of the situations that we see, and there have been studies most recently uh, where people forget about the child, um, believe that they have dropped the child off for daycare and, and various things. But that's not this situation where there's uh, absolute total disregard for the child. Considering that the two of you were there around the car any number of times without doing anything to save this child's life and contributing to the child's death. And um, all the good things I've heard today, um, you know, being a teacher, being a concerned person, uh, being a wonderful friend, a person of faith, um, you know, that wasn't a person there on that day when you all uh, were on this drug binge, at least as described by, um, by Mr. King. Uh, and, and I've said it before, the people we see in court are typically not the people that were out on the streets doing the things that landed them in court. And it doesn't get any worse than this as it relates to a mother and a child and um, a person with the mother dealing with the child. Uh, so the offense that you committed was murder. And it's, it's all, that's all there is to it. Uh, and of course you would love the opportunity to turn back the hands of time, but you can't do it. Of course, you will continue to suffer for what happened to your child. And, but for being strung out on meth, and I've seen it time and time again. Was it methamphetamine we're dealing with? Yeah, but for methamphetamine and dealing with it, uh, neither of the two of you would be here. But those are decisions that you all made. And to the extent your minds were just totally contorted, and you know, I don't know the minds of a person on meth, but I you know, paid close attention to the, um, to the witness who, uh, who testified convincingly 
about the effects of methamphetamine on the brain. It's as if you didn't have a brain on that day at that time. And, you know, we're hearing about this mistake and bad judgment and all the, you know, I see it all the time with children, people who we deal with all the time. I call them children, 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, 20-year-olds, people who do these same types of things, kill people uh, because they're strung out on drugs, high on drugs. And, um, you know, a life sentence for them is more than the, the um, lifespan that you're talking about because they're going to prison at age, ages 20, 21, 22, 23 for life. And you don't have the excuse that they might come in here with. Of course, none of it is acceptable. But they will come in you know, strung out on drugs, parents strung out on drugs, all kinds of things that play into them going wayward, going astray. Uh, and for you a person who had a good reputation in the community to throw it away chasing drugs uh, and then coming and asking me for leniency? And I'm trying to balance who's more at fault here, really, um, Mr. King or Ms. Panalangam. I mean, it's a... It's almost a toss-up. <laughs> Mr. King put the child in the car and, per the video, just didn't care anything about the child. Just left the child there to die while he is, while they're pursuing each other. <laughs> it's just so. It's almost unbelievable. How could you all do such a thing? And you could do such a thing because you're hooked on drugs, hooked on meth. Pardon? I That makes you having less an excuse, less justification. Your mind wasn't screwed up as you're telling us now. <laughs> yeah, a mother who's not under the influence would leave their child in a car under those circumstances for five, six hours. Who would, who knew the child was in the car? and knew the child had been in the car for that period of time and drive off and leave the child. How could you? Um, anything further? It's his first time as well. No, no. This is not a testify. I don't think he's got not really light on it. Yes, sir.
doesn't help me clarify in my mind who is the most culpable out of this situation or are they equally culpable? Are there whose conduct was the most extreme? The mother who abandons her child in that setting and does nothing to rescue the child, who chooses Mr. King and her own pleasure over the child, or Mr. King who uh, throws the child, or he didn't throw her, places the child in the back of the car and, and, um, and shows no concern, compa compassion, or anything for the child, and in effect joins with uh, the mother in the treatment of the child. Though it wasn't his child, he, he initiated uh, his role in it when he placed the child in the back of the car and when he did nothing to get the child out of the car. On behalf of Mr. King, in, in response to your honor, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All my being Yes, sir. And I, I, I appreciate that. You've repeated, you've said that repeatedly, and I accept it, and I, I appreciate that. In my mind, I'm trying to make that determination because I'm going to have to sentence each one of them to a period of years. They might get the same. One might get 30, one might get 40, one might get 50. One might, they might each get the same. Understand. Thank you. And I'm not attempting to pit one against the other. I'm just, you know, yeah. Mr. Solicitor. I don't like people to stay quiet on me. What is the penalty for great bodily injury? 20. That, that's zero. Yes, sir. And I looked it up before. I just yes. wanted to be sure. All right, Mr. King, if you'll come around for sentencing. King is sentenced to the court on the offense of murder that you be committed to the State Department of Corrections for a period of 32 years. Great bodily injury, the sentence is 20 years. Sentences will run concurrent with credit for any time that you've already served. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you all.
this panel anger, and you know, a lot of folks have said a lot of good things about you and a lot of positive impacts that you've made on their lives. Uh, you're not being sentenced to death. You, know, you won't be facing a firing squad or a gas chamber or electric chair. Uh, your life goes on, but it'll go on behind bars and you'll still have that same opportunity to make a positive impact on the lives of other people who you encounter, and I hope you do that. I simply cannot fathom a mother treating a child the way that you did and allowing that to happen to a child, to your child, the child that you birth, yeah. I don't know if the child at some point became a burden. I don't know what the circumstances were that would lead you to placing the child in that situation and as if you left and went to Atlanta, Georgia or maybe we'll say uh, not Charles, to Myrtle Beach and went there and got in the beach for in a ward a few hours and then come, came back and then uh, then decided that it's a frantic situation. You did it. You have to live with it. And as bad as the conduct of Mr. King was, yours was worse in my mind. And, you know, you can talk about intent where you have rational thinking minds, but extreme recklessness brought upon by drugs and alcohol. As uh, we said, intoxication is not a defense and not an excuse. That's what, in effect, you're asking, and it's not. Sentence of the court is that you be committed to the State Department of Correction for a period of 37 years on murder, 20 years on great bodily injury. Sentences will run concurrent and you will receive credit for time served. Do we have the number of days of credit that they're entitled to? 39. You receive credit for 39 days. And Mr. Uh, Mr. King, do we know how many days he gets credit for? Did, did Mr. Uh, other guy left, Mr. The lawyers? Do, does anyone know? I'll just uh, have that calculated by the Department of Corrections. Yes, sir. So, and you, and you might be right, um, I, or, and that might pertain to a single incident, not a continuous course of conduct over many hours. What, what says the state? 